Enchanté. Hello lovelies, I'm Angela and this is Parisian Farm Girl Bienvenue. Welcome to the channel. Pardon my apron. I'm still working like crazy. As you know, I'm leaving for my Paris flea market tour in oh boy, <laughs> four weeks. So you're watching this on Monday. So I leave four weeks from tomorrow. Wow. Uh, we have started ripping out the floors in the kitchen. That's very exciting. And I am working on a project myself that I have been working on for so long. And I'm going to be sharing that with you soon. I will give you a hint. It has something to do with Giverny. Yes, I will be visiting Giverny again on my Paris trip four weeks from now because it's one of my most favorite places on earth. Something that's so beautiful about that home is all the details. And I get asked so often how to add old world charm to a new world build. That's what we've been doing here for the last six years. So if you've been following the channel for a long time, you know this house wasn't built in the 1880s. It was built in the 1980s, much to my chagrin. Now, my husband loves it because the foundation is secure and the windows are solid in theory, um, but I'm forever wanting to make changes to dial back the clock and make it look like a very old home. And so in today's video, what I'm doing is I want to introduce you to the things we do in the Old World Design Society. I know some of you are curious, you don't quite have a handle on what I'm talking about when I mention the Old World Design Society. This is a private forum and we have both amateur and professional ASID uh, interior designers and we get together every week and it's sort of like um, a feed. So we're sharing our projects, we're sharing our antique treasures, our thrift finds. Every Monday I issue a design challenge. Right now we're focusing a lot on um, the design element of pattern and incorporating that with the design principle of balance. So I want to teach you a lot about pattern and balance and how to incorporate those two things into what you do with your home. So we do that on Mondays. Every Monday there's a fresh challenge. Every Friday I go live for a live coffee talk. So if you want to hop on and tell me what you're doing or if you want to see what I have in store for the weekend, we just get together and drink coffee and visit. It's really fun. And if you're looking for like-minded friends, that's definitely the place to be. Now, if you are watching this in real time, I drop a video on Mondays. So tonight I'm doing a live design Q&A for my Old World Design Society. That means that you can submit photographs and your questions about what you're doing with your home, whether you have a new build and you're looking at blueprints or whether you're doing a rehab or you just want questions with what to do with a sofa, you don't know where to place it. You can submit those questions to us and we're gonna answer those in a live design call. So if you like all things Old World and interior design, we are your people. I'd like to treat you to a month free. So stay with us for a month and see what it's like to be a part of this beautiful community. Click the link in this video description. Now what I'm sharing with you today is a class that I have taught for the society. This is five ways to add old world charm to your home. It's a nice long class. There's very good details for you and I think it will sort of give you a pulse as to what we're doing in the society and of course, even more important, many, many good ideas for you and your own home in helping you come your home's very best interior designer. And I'm going to share my screen with you and expand that. Um, welcome. Welcome to five ways to add old world charm to your new world home. My name is Angela Reed and online I am known as Parisian Farm Girl. I am also the curator of the Old World Design Society. We get together and we do events like this as a society. So I think most of you are not society members, so I welcome you. That gives you a little bit of a feel for uh, how we do things in the society. One of the biggest questions that I get is, uh, I'm in new construction help. What do I do? I love Europe. 
I love England. I've traveled. How do I bring that old world aesthetic into my house? So today I wanted to give you five ways that you can do that, that you can add old world charm to your new world home. I'm, I'm going to be sharing some slides with you. And then I do invite you to stay until the end, because I'm going to tell you how we'll proceed from here. I'm going to send you a printable of everything we've talked about. And I have some other fun things for you. So you can pause this and watch it at your leisure on the replay. It will arrive in your email inbox the minute we are done here this evening. So I think for me, I know for me, one of the reasons I love an old world style is because I believe it takes off a really large amount of pressure for the homemaker, for the home designer. Because when we look at homes in England and in France, in the Netherlands, in Italy, in the old country, uh, what we see is a lot of manipulation. And in that manipulation comes a sense of freedom. So if you look at those homes, they're, they're obviously older. They're much older than architecture we have here in the United States, generally speaking. And they have had to um, fit those homes out for modern lifestyles. So you'll often see exposed plumbing, exposed wiring, floors that are crooked, um, very interesting uh, lighting, you know, that's swagged over and sort of rigged to accommodate the space because there's, there's not lighting in the ceiling or there's not an outlet nearby because all of that was added in many cases, hundreds of years later. So a lot of those things as Americans in particular, we look at them and generally, you know, they're, they're considered an imperfection, but I think when it comes to decorating our home, if we can embrace wood, that's a little bit worn down, maybe a fun old shabby light fixture or some old windows or some great textiles that aren't exactly perfect. Maybe it's a beautiful threadbare sofa. When we can embrace some of those perfect imperfections, it really gives us a lot more freedom. And for many of us, it really gives us the look that we're going for. That vibe, that ancestral vibe, not the look that you went to a furniture showroom and you know picked out, I'll take this and I'll take this and I'll take this, but a look that is gathered. And it's been collected over the years. There are hand-me-downs. There are family heirlooms, treasured items, maybe items that a grandparent saved for a very long time to, to purchase or that were passed down from generation to generation. So it's a very um, nostalgic, warm sort of look, that old world style. And old world is just this general term that I use to sort of encompass a lot of what we talk about in this society, a lot of what I'm talking about with you right now. So as you're looking at your new construction, and I'm assuming if you're here, you have new construction. If you don't, if you're in an older home, say you're in an old painted lady Victorian, or you're in something fabulous over on the East Coast, a colonial, you're still going to find some ideas that you can employ here today. So let's start with uh, the first item. And that would be architectural details. For me, doors are one of the greatest ways to add a fantastic old world architectural detail to your house. You can see we've got some beautiful examples of some very fine wood. Some, of course, there's always the, the fun chipping paint option, that great, European look of double doors. There are so many options with doors. And when you take off those modern doors, and if you watch my YouTube channel, you know this is a really big thing for me. New doors, I always joke that they kill my soul. I hate new doors. I love to use an old door wherever I can. So if you can take off those, those new doors, whether they're hollow cheapies, or even if they're six paneled from Home Depot or Lowe's, and replace them with old doors, that is going to make an incredible difference in your space. And don't be afraid of mismatched trim. Don't be afraid of needing to trim the door down a little bit. You might want to have hubby or a handyman help you with that because 
there might be some placement of the escutcheon and the doorknob and the hinges that needs to be manipulated a little bit. But adding old doors, even if you just add one at a time throughout your home, is going to be a great way to add old world charm. I'm sure you've seen on Pinterest where people do wonderful things. Well, they will use um, an old door for a pantry door. Don't be afraid to extend it beyond that. Put them on your bedroom, put them on the bathrooms, start a little collection of doors, keep them in your garage until you're ready to use them. What I do is I, I have all the measurements of my doors um, on my phone in my notes and I keep them with me because you never know when you're going to see one. Now, some of the places that you can find old doors for your house are salvage shops, antique shops, Facebook marketplace, and of course, Craigslist. Carrying measurements is vital and there's going to be so many options once you start to explore this idea of replacing the doors in your home. Another architectural detail that I highly suggest looking into and making adjustments in your space, in your new world space to make it look old world is fixtures. And by that, I mean your faucets, your doorknobs, your hinges, anything that's metal in your house, taking a look at it and assessing what do I have going on in this modern construction that is detouring from an old world look. Something that's going to do that almost all of the time is chrome, brushed nickel. There's certain finishes that you're just not going to see in a European home. And by swapping those out as you can, you can make a huge, huge difference. And there's a lot of fun to be had here. There's a lot of really great internet scouring. Um, that's something we do in the society. We have a private forum for all of us home designers and we have different categories. So it's listed by, you know, bathrooms, kitchens, living rooms, but we have a sources page. So anytime somebody finds a new source, like a really great source for, for doing these sorts of things, we list it on our sources page. Changing out your faucets is, is very fun. Sourcing new faucets is very fun. There's a special finish that if you can swing it, it's a little bit more expensive, which is a shame because it actually, actually um, requires less work for the manufacturer. But there's a special finish that you can look up when we're done here called living finish brass or unlacquered brass. And if you've ever been in an old estate or a home and you've seen the faucets in the bathroom and the kitchen have a really beautiful patina, maybe they look worn. You can tell they've been handled over the years or there's a little, a little verdigris going on. They just have this beautiful finish. What you're looking at is called living finish brass or unlacquered brass. And that is a beautiful selection as you're looking to swap out faucets. So if you can find your kitchen faucet or your bathroom faucet in the aisle at Lowe's or Home Depot or the local hardware store, you can know that is really killing your old world vibe. So the trick with this style is to make all these little detail changes because you can't really rebuild your house. You're in new construction. So you need to take the details and switch them to this old world look. Oil rubbed bronze is a great option as well. Now there are some tricks to the trade. So you can visit the faux finish department at say Michael's Arts and Crafts or even the local Ace Hardware or True Value. And many of them carry some really fun uh, painting products that you can paint the item metal whether it's a vase or a piece of wood, or even sometimes metal, like a, a you know, bright, shiny brass from the hardware store, you can paint it and add a chemical solution on top that will give it a really beautiful patina, a really great fair degree look. I am going to be listing some of those sources in the handout for this class that you will get in your email. We're going to talk about that a little bit more at the end, but you'll definitely want to have that. There are so many tricks that you can keep up your sleeve for creating an old world look. And you'll see this is like opening Pandora's box. We're gonna have lots of fun. Another look that you can, or rather another thing that you can do to add old world charm to your new world home is take a really good look at your windows. Now, this is a huge struggle for me. I'm in new construction. I live new construction, 1984. I live right now in the newest home I've ever lived in. The windows present a challenge. 
nothing screams new construction like vinyl. So if you have wood windows with some fabulous, even with some fabulous warbly glass, like you are worlds ahead of the game. But for those of us who are stuck with new windows, um, we need to sort of manipulate the situation a little bit. So what you can do is simply layer old windows in front of your new ones, you know, where it's going to work. We don't want things to be um, impractical, but we can have a little fun at the same time. So here's some great of a great photograph of someone who made a shower using old windows. And then here's an example, like I was saying, of someone who simply hung old windows in front of new windows, just to add a little bit of interest and a little bit of charm. This is really fun. Now your sourcing for old windows is going to be very similar to your, or exactly the same rather, as your sourcing for old doors. So salvage shops, antique shops, Facebook marketplace, and Craigslist all day. And don't be afraid to put the word out that you're looking for old windows because most of the time people when they're tearing down something down or doing work and replacing their windows, a lot of times people are taking the wooden windows out of their home and replacing them with vinyl, ironically, and put the word out and people will set those aside for you because they are sort of a hassle for them to get rid of. Now, another way, the second way rather that you can add old world charm to your new world home is through textiles. This is one of my favorite departments. I am textile crazy. The thing about textiles is that you don't have to put yourself or your family in a position where um, things are impractical. So it's not that you're literally using the textiles, but I find that by draping them strategically around the house and using them where you can, it really helps with an old world vibe. So let's start with linen because linen is pretty easy to get your hands on, especially on Etsy. You can find some beautiful linen pieces. I myself have a linen closet, a collection that I've been building over the years, but this is simply a matter of draping. You can dress your tables in linens. You can dress your sofa. Maybe you have an arm of a sofa that a child got a stain on, you can go ahead and just drape a beautiful piece of fabric over the edge of that sofa. And again, that's that sort of old world um, laid back, very comfortable approach to design where I think here in America, because we're sort of modern, bigger, better, faster, there's a rigidity to our approach to design. And in England and in Europe with that sort of timeless relaxed. We've been here a long time. We know what we're doing, feeling they're just more comfortable. I think their homes have a much more comfortable feeling. And for those of us with families, I have six children. It's a, it's a, it's a look that's easy for us because it can um, accommodate being very lived in. So if you have a, a ruined piece of furniture, or maybe somebody set a glass down on your favorite coffee table, go ahead and drape some fabric. Maybe there's an arm to a sofa that's been ruined. Go ahead and drape some beautiful fabric. Linen is a lovely way to start. And linen is typically a more neutral way to start. So if you don't have your um, color muscles, you know, up to snuff, if you're not ready to flex your color muscles, linen is a great place to begin. Sorry, my washing machine is running in the background. I hope my mic is not picking that up. Now, if you want to go for a little glam, then an old world look is very much going to accommodate fabrics like velvet and other rich fabrics like a damask, a matelasse, velvet, um, satin. These are also things that you can use to make curtains out of. You can use curtains made in these fabrics and they're going to add really um, a richness. So we're not going to hop on Amazon and look for shears if we're going for a an old world look. We're going we're not going to go grab, you know, the latest buffalo plaid at Bed Bath and Beyond. We're going to do a little scouring. We're going to do a little digging. If you're an old world design society member, you're going to use the resources that we have to find some really fabulous fabrics to drape your home in. I recently invested in a gorgeous textile. It's very old, probably from about 1850. 
and it's Joan of Arc. And it's just a simple piece of fabric. There's no way I could afford the whole set because it's very old and it was rightfully so it was very pricey, but I just got one piece that I could drape somewhere and appreciate it. Every time I see it, my heart swoons. And I think that's one of the fun things about old world design, because a lot of times the hunt is involved. A lot of times there's a skill that's been developed behind what you've done. You know, you improve, you get better. Your eye starts to get more honed. You know what to shop for. Um, that Joan of Arc piece is one of my, my latest conquests. Uh, lace is another really beautiful, beautiful textile that you can bring into your home. And again, I personally think Etsy is a great place to find some pieces, but I just want to share these pieces with you um, because they're very beautiful and they're very simple. And I just imagine one of your, even if it's a vinyl window with one of these beautiful lace curtains over it and the wind is blowing and you've got some fantastic music playing and maybe you're lounging on your wonderful chintz sofa reading a really good design book but the thing about old world is that it's you know it becomes it's sort of an expression of yourself so i've heard this from so many women um women in particular in the society that by learning these skills, it sort of gives them a permission to finally express themselves in their home. And that, that's something that makes me really excited. Almost as excited as the third way that I think you can add old world charm to your home. And that is through creative wall surfaces. Most of us in new construction are dealing with drywall. And most of us in new construction are dealing with a very thin baseboard Many times it's plastic, but you know, we're dealing with just basic drywall and we're left sort of wondering how can we make this more interesting? How can we create these walls to be another layer of our design? How can these walls speak? How can they sing? So I'm going to give you a few ideas. I'm going to give you five ideas. As a matter of fact, a look that I absolutely love, I'm so intrigued by this look is paneling. And I don't mean, uh, you know, 1970s bedroom paneling. I mean, your classic French paneling. I'm going to give you a few examples here. You can see, you know, this look, you've seen it before in uh, older homes. Maybe you've visited France and you've seen this. This is a beautiful, timeless look. Now, a lot of times what we see when we search this online is we see a very faux finished, a very distressed old example of paneling. You can do that if you if you have the skill set to do that. Otherwise, you can keep it very simple. And actually, this is where Home Depot and Lowe's and stores like that <clears throat> are going to come to the rescue because they actually have moldings that you can purchase and you can measure out your space and you can trim it out and deck it out and make it look like you have paneling in your new world home. Now, if you want to go a step further, you could even um, line the walls with a really good quality plywood first and then do the moldings on top. So it looks like a true wooden paneling, but these are easily found. You can get really creative. I've seen people use old cupboard doors to do it very well, lined up all around um, like the bottom 36 inches of a living room to create sort of a from the chair rail on down paneling. This is a great way, especially if your style happens to be a little bit more French, a little bit more Paris apartment style. This is a great way to add that look. Faux finishes are also going to be your new best friend. And this is where you really have to get brave, hire a professional, or just start experimenting and see what happens. But there are gorgeous finishes like Venetian plaster even just good old Miss Mustard Seed paint and experiment with different levels of viscosity. Use a little bit more water in some, a little bit less water in another batch. Try a brush, try a sponge. Keep in mind that you're trying to create a wall that looks like it's been around for a while. So don't be afraid to make the corners a little bit darker and the edges a little bit heavier because you want it to have that look that maybe not dirt, but a patina has settled in the corners over the years. Faux finishes are another way that can absolutely be a game changer. 
something you've seen me do in my home is called skip trawling. This is where we mix up a big five gallon bucket of joint compound and we use a knife. You can find them in the hardware store. And we put a little bit of that joint compound on the knife and skim it over the walls. And it makes almost like a stucco effect. So there's some surface variety to the walls. And then you can come in with your paints and there'll be little nooks and crannies for the paint to fall in. So definitely experiment with that. In fact, grab a piece of drywall, go to the store. Um, I think you have to buy it in eight foot sheets, but if you can buy it smaller, do that. It might be a little bit more manageable and just experiment. Prop some up in your garage, get some joint compound and experiment with it if you're a little bit nervous about trying it right in the house. Of course, another way to add that old world charm, I think in particular, this is a very English look, is to use wallpaper. Wallpaper is becoming so popular again, and rightfully so, because there are really some beautiful, beautiful options out there for you. You can spend an entire week in the evenings clicking on Etsy and just finding the right one using keywords like antique and vintage and traditional, classic, English country, British country. Type those in when you're doing your search and it's going to really help narrow down. But wallpaper is a lot easier than it used to be too because we have this fabulous peel and stick option these days. And that is something I would definitely look into if you want to start small experiment with wallpapering a closet or a pantry and just see what sort of charm that adds, what sort of interest that adds when you open the door. And if you're looking, if you do look at your, <clears throat> your um, European magazines, you know, maybe you're at the grocery store, grab a copy of uh, the UK version of country living, for example, you'll see there's so much interest and the interest comes in the details. And I think these details that we're talking here today even if you just used one of each thing that I mentioned are going to add a, a great variety to your home, that, just that next level of interest. Um, two more ways that you can um, improve your wall surfaces are with tin. Of course, there's always the option for a tin backsplash or a tin ceiling. You can buy new, you can buy salvaged pieces, you can even buy the wallpaper that is embossed to look like tin and have a lot of fun there. Once I did um, a basement pub for someone and I used the tin on the ceiling, that wallpaper, and I painted it with a uh, copper paint and then squirted that chemical reactive paint I was telling you about in the corners and it made it look patinaed and bare degree. It was very cool. So lots of fun to have there. And of course, tile. Tile is an excellent way to add old world charm to your new world home. That's a tongue twister. And I say, if you're going to do tile, the more, the better. If you look at homes, especially in France, uh, there's a lot of, in the Netherlands, there's a lot of tile. Okay. So there, we're doing more than the backsplash. We're doing the entire wall or the entire kitchen. Have fun there. Um, in a recent edition of Old World Design Society, I did an article on how to hand paint your own Delft tile. So there's just lots of options. Wall surfaces are that third way. You can add this sort of charm to your homes. We've got paneling, faux finishes, wallpapers, tin, and tile. Now, the fourth way you can do this is by adding some creative lighting to your space. So this is your opportunity to get rid of anything that looks like it's from a hardware store. Just start going systematically through the house, obviously to replace all the lighting. If you're in new construction and it all needs to go is going to be um, very overwhelming, possibly cost prohibitive. That's a lot of work, um, especially if you're hiring an electrician, if you're not handy enough to make those changes yourself. But this is your opportunity to get rid of the boob light and anything else that's really distracting from that feel. This is where you want to bring in vintage chandeliers, whether they are wooden, whether they are crystal. Some of them are going to have some, some beautiful work like this gorgeous um, Wedgwood example of a chandelier. They are going to have beautiful metal work, especially your more Italian ones. So when you're doing your searches, if you're um, shopping online, 
go ahead. If your style is more um, Tuscan, go ahead and type in Italian chandelier because you're going to get some really great examples. If it's more of an English country, type that in in your search because there are actually different styles. Those really traditional brass chandeliers that you see, that's going to probably fall under a Dutch category. The, the world is your oyster when it comes to chandeliers. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to spend the summer scouring flea markets. Don't be afraid of needing them, to, of them needing to be rewired. This is something that you can learn to do yourself or pay someone who's handy to do. And there are fabulous sources available to you for the sleeve. So I was going to grab one for you, but it's, I can't quite reach it. I knock something over those sleeves that slide down over the, the electrical piece on a chandelier. You can get those in a variety of colors and in a variety of patinas with big, fabulous faux wax strips coming down them. There's so many options. And of course, um, lampshades are going to really just take it to the next level. This next, um, the spring edition of the magazine coming out in a few weeks has a great article on vintage lampshades that will really kind of help you in this direction. Wall sconces are another thing. If you look at your, our friends across the pond, you're going to see a lot of wall sconces. Uh, you can use um, candlelight for this or an actually an actual electrical wall sconce, but these are going to give you a really great look. Think about using them on either side of your bathroom uh, mirror, on either side of your bed. Maybe it's just a lone sweet little sconce on tucked into a corner of your kitchen that, you know, when the kitchen's all clean in the evening, you can turn it on and it's cozy. Wall sconces, again, give you plenty of options. Just say no to super shiny brass. Try to find some fabulous old ones. Picture that faux finish that you just did, sort of a little heavier around the edges of the sconce, like it's been there forever and you will be set. Uh, table lamps, of course, the more charming, the better. Uh, again, don't be afraid of needing to rewire them. Go to my YouTube channel. In fact, I'll put this in the email when I follow up with you at the end of this class. I did a tutorial, a very easy tutorial. If I can do it, you can do it on how to rewire a lamp. Once you have those, a few, once you have a few, um, skill sets, a few, uh, it's the word I'm trying to think of. I can't even think of it. Once you have a few know-hows, that's as good as I'm going to do in your back pocket. Again, it's going to just expand your options. So definitely learn how to rewire a, a table lamp or a nightstand lamp, because that's going to really um, give you so much more variety and you'll know when it needs to be rewired because you'll be able to see the plug. It's going to put a little fear into you. It's easy peasy to swap it out. And of course, last but not least, when it comes to lighting is candlelight. Candlelight makes us all look so much better. It's so much more romantic. It's so much more old world. And my favorite, of course, is beeswax. I love beeswax. You can't go wrong with beeswax for an old world look. Uh, last but not least. Okay. Last but not least, let's see here, is floor coverings. Uh, let's talk about our different old world options for floor color coverings, and we will start with oil cloth. Now, I think this is a very New England colonial type look. I love them. They're beautiful. There are reproductions that are made today that are absolutely stunning. This might be a great option for you. Another I'm as far as my personal, um, journey, I'm so into Persian and Turkish rugs right now. And again, like I was saying, um, you get better, you know, you get better as you go. And that's actually something we talk about in the society all the time together, that we are this society of like-minded people. We love old things. Nobody's the weirdo in this group. And we're growing together in our skill sets. We're improving our home design skill sets. Persian rugs were something I was always really intimidated by. I saw them. I knew they looked fabulous. I knew there was a lot of freedom there. They don't always have to match. You can drape one on top of the other. But finally, just now in the last year, I've gotten to the point where I was ready to pull the trigger and start using them in my home. And I have to say, they're a total game changer. 
just a total game changer. I know the washables are really popular right now. I've chosen to invest in the real thing. So it does take a little um, strategy on my part. Um, but that's something that we're learning about in the society where they come from, the stories behind them, Persian and Turkish rugs. Like if you want to take your old world skills and your look to the next level, try one. They don't have to match. Use one in your kitchen, use one in your bathroom, use a couple in your living room, layer them. So exciting. And I know you've seen it. I know you've seen it, especially, um, in your, our, our, you know, English publications where you see them and it's just this very formal floral living room, for example, and then there'll be this just beautiful geometric um, Persian rug on the floor. Definitely, definitely look into that. Another um, floor covering that I love is a good old hooked rug. Now this is a very, to me, a very American look, very like sign of 1920s, 30s, 40s look. I think they're beautiful, easily found on eBay. A lot of times you can find um, them in pairs. Well, they'll have a smaller one and a larger one. So you can use them sort of as a bedroom set. I think it's a very feminine antique look. I love it. I mix them right with my Persians. So hooked rugs, I would look into for sure. And last but not least, of course, wood floors. And the options are endless depending on what you're going for. And you have a chance here again, once again, you see this overarching theme of creativity. And for some of you, that's going to be really intimidating. And I would hope that that's where I come in in the future to help you learn to get better for other, for others of you, you just hear the word and you're ready to go. You're ready to try something new. Wood floors have so many options. Um, you can mix them with brick. You can make a pattern with wood planks and with brick. You can do a herringbone pattern. Of course, there's that great Paris apartment parquet floor look. Your planks can be uneven. Some of them can be six inches wide. Some of them can be 12 inches wide. Some of them can have big spaces in between them, smaller spaces. Again, uh, the look you're going for is something that's not perfect. You're trying to create this look of something that's been around for a long time. So you're in new construction. What are your options? Your options are salvaged floors. So wood that's been reclaimed from other homes, um, be them here in America or uh, over in Europe. Your options, if you're on a budget or a really good quality plywood, that's cut into strips and then tacked down, sanded and tacked down to resemble wood floors. And if you were doing that, my suggestion would be to paint them. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm doing in my master bath uh, until I can find the right floor, which will probably take a few years. I'm going to go with a really good plywood. I'm going to cut it into uneven sizes. I'm going to paint it really fabulous paint, probably an oil base. So it's nice and can hold up to the washer and dryer in there and the bathtub. Um, but your wood floors are going to give you plenty of options. And of course, tile. Tile floors are also an option too. You have your beautiful mosaic Victorian type. You've got so many, so many options. Don't be afraid to use tile. Go with a marble, a Carrera, a Angora, um, the little Victorian kind. And then if you start on this journey online, you will find the most beautiful options brought in from Europe where they have been salvaged. So you've got salvaged terracotta in a true terracotta color. They come in a beautiful bone white. You can find beautiful painted tiles that have been salvaged. So many options there. A lot of times when we're looking at a room that we're going to tile, it's a smaller space. So it does give us um, some options as far as things being a little bit more affordable and don't discount the uh, local um, stores like Home Depot and Lowe's stand there and really study the tile, something with more of a matte finish, something that's more historic in its pattern are going to be, those are going to be the right selections for you as you're adding old world charm to your new world home. So I think we did it. We, um, we went over five ways, lots of, lots of uh, drop downs in those five ways, five ways that you can add old world charm to your new world home. We started with architectural details, 
We went on to textiles, we covered wall surfaces, lighting, and of course, floor coverings. But I sort of wanted to take it to the next level because I think growth, even in creating our spaces, is so important. And I think relationships and making friendships are so important. So I created this forum and I'm going to share my screen with you and show you a little bit of what it looks like. You can see that it's got lots of categories on the left, different rooms. We have different announcements. We do homework projects together. And then down at the bottom, you can see are the sources that I mentioned a little bit ago. So this is our private forum. This is where this is where everybody hangs out. And then three times during the quarter, I teach a class like this. So we get together, you can join us live or you can watch the recording. I always send the recording out and we do a class like this. And then other courses we've studied um, oil paintings and how to identify them. We've had a lot of fun. So I'd like to invite you to join the society. I'd love to see you in the society on that forum. I'd love to hear from you. Show us your home, pick everybody's brain. You can submit design questions to me. It's a lot of fun. It's a very unique experience, but nonetheless, I hope that you found this time together useful and I got your wheels spinning and you can turn around and go use some of these ideas in your own home. All right, there's a reason I have my apron on, and that is because I'm installing some of my Monet tile on the walls. I've done three coats of sealer on the boot room terracotta. Joel is currently ripping out the wooden floors where we eat in the kitchen, and we're gonna start moving through the kitchen with the flooring. I'm hoping to get it done before I leave for France. More importantly, I want you to visit us on the Old World Design Society and see what you think. You can do that by clicking this link right here. Of course, watch another video, make sure you've subscribed, and we're going to catch you up with everything that's going on in our Everyday Chateau on Friday at 10 a.m. Central. I will see you then. A bientôt.